Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we've got a new Giratina card to look at. And it's got a really nice ability. And it's an ability that might look a little bit familiar. Now, this has been translated by the lovely David Hockman over at Rappelman TCG on Facebook. And starting off here, we got 130 HP. Which is really nice. It means you can survive a hit from Buzzwall. Although you actually have resistance, so even if they have a Diancy Prism Star, you're still taking that hit. Unfortunately, you will not survive the hit from Zoroark because you are weak to Zoroark and all other Darkness Pokemon. Which is a little bit sad. Having said that, they could always have just played a Devoured Field, so it, I don't think it's the end of the world here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the Retreat cost is one, which is quite nice. That's fairly low and does open the possibility of an Escape Board. We have the Resistance to Fighting really is good because you've got stuff like Pika-Rom at the moment, which is weak. So a lot of fighting stuff gets played. You having resistance is good. And being a psychic Pokemon is nice. It means we can use Malamar to accelerate energy. It means we can use Spell Tag to do a little bit of cheeky damage. It means you're hitting weakness on stuff like Buzzwall. So yeah, I'm quite liking this. But it's the ability I'm liking here more than anything else. And it should sound mostly familiar. According to David, the ability reads, Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand onto your bench, you may discard a special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. It's kind of Kartana. It's not exactly Kartana. It is kind of Kartana. Anyone tell me the big difference? Kartana can discard an energy, a special energy, attached to any of your opponent's Pokemon. It is very much an enhanced hammer, whereas this can only discard a special energy attached to your opponent's active. It's basically a nerfed version of Team Flare Grunt, because it can only discard a special energy, or enhanced hammer, because it can only discard from the active. Of course, it's also significantly worse, objectively worse, than the new Lycanroc GX's ability, which, when you evolve up, is Team Flare Grunt. It lets you discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. But you'll notice all the Pokemon I've been talking about are either Stage 1s, GX's, or both. This is a basic non-GX Pokemon. And that makes it really, really nice. It means that it's almost not worth your opponent going after it with a Guzma. You drop a Kartana, get rid of an energy, and your opponent might be thinking, well, it probably, in fact, a lot of time will be thinking, you know what? It's worth going away from my regular plan just for a turn, use a Guzma, grab someone off the bench, Kartana, take two prizes, and then we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming. That's a two-prize liability. Whereas with Giratina, it gives up one prize. There's no real reason to go after this more than anything else. So it gives you almost reliable energy denial while not having to worry about it really getting taken down because it's almost not worth taking down. The thing is, like Kartana before it, it is searchable. Now, Nest Ball won't do it because although it'll search out Giratina, it'll put it straight onto the bench and you don't get the ability. That's a bad thing. But Ultra Ball will search it out here. That's quite nice. And if you don't want to discard two cards from your hand, but you are willing to discard one, might I remind you that it is a psychic Pokemon, and you can therefore use Mysterious Treasure to go and search it out. Discard one card from your hand and search for a psychic or dragon Pokemon. And this is really nice. Of course, the best use for this is this Prism Star Energy. Beast Energy, which we see in all Ultra Beast decks, I'm talking Boswell and Blacephalon mostly, although, you know, there are others. Might I remind you, Feromosa and Buzzwall is coming out soon and is looking like it's going to be phenomenally good. And they drop it down, and it is a Prism Star Energy, which means that when it's discarded, it goes to the Lost Zone. They can't have it back for the rest of the game. So they drop that down. They use it once. You search out Giratina. It goes away. Life is good. The other one we have is Super Boost Energy, which does come around every so often. You do see this seeing a fairly large amount of play, but it kind of comes and goes. It, it never really stays around in the best decks for very long. But if it makes a reappearance, this gets rid of it. Is this better than Kartana? It depends how your opponent's playing. 
And the problem is your opponent can adjust their play to make it not better than Kartana. Your opponent can see that you're not playing Enhanced Hammer, but you are playing this. So they don't put a double colorless energy on their Zoroark until they absolutely have to. They just stash it on the bench and then bring the bench one active. With Kartana, they can't do that. They can't leave a double colorless energy on the bench because you can take it out using Kartana and then your opponent is, well, let's say in a suboptimal position. But they can avoid Giratina. Now, you can, say, gust it active with Guzma and then drop a Giratina to get rid of it. But now you're getting into really annoying territory. Now you're using your supporter for the turn and using up a bent space just to take out a special energy. And I just don't think that's good enough. This works best as a surprise or in an emergency. Otherwise... It's too easy for your opponent to just not attach the energy yet or to attach it to the bench. But just like we talked about in our Hooper video earlier, sometimes the best use for Giratina might just be your opponent knows you're playing it. And if your opponent knows that you're playing it, then they're going to be a little bit more careful. They're going to go, I'm going to attach this double colorless. Oh, no, no, actually, I probably shouldn't attach the double colorless yet. I'll tell you what, I'll attach it in a minute when I'm ready. And all of a sudden, they're not attaching energy when they want to, to try and hurt you. And as soon as they're not attaching energy that they want to attach to try and hurt you, that's actually working out pretty nicely for you. That's giving you a big advantage. In terms of decks using this, we've talked about Beast Energy in Ultra Beast decks, and Zoroark is still everywhere using double colorless energy. We do see Picarom decks running around at the moment that, generally speaking, don't tend to play any special energy. And Malamar decks, uh, Malamar decks can go either way. Some of them do play Ultra Necrozma, and then they take advantage of the fact that there is a unit energy which provides both Psychic and Metal energy, and they roll with that. But there are a bunch of decks out there that don't use special energy. This is a tech card. Make no mistake about it. This is not a card that's going to go in every deck. This is a card that you chuck in as a tech here and there to help yourself against matchups. This is an I really don't like playing against Zoroark. I'll play one or two of these to hurt my opponent if they try relying too much on double colorless energy. It's quite nice. It's not as good as Kartana. But it only gives up one prize. But Cartana does have the really good GX attack. What does this attack do? Well, Psychic Double Colorless, 70 damage, and Confusion. And I swear at this stage it's getting weird. There have been so many random Psychic Pokemon coming out lately that do 70 damage. We looked at Miss Magus with a great ability. Yeah, that does 70 damage. We looked at Mewtwo, that does 70 damage. We looked at Gengar. That does 70 damage. There's a whole bunch of Pokemon that are psychic. It seems that 70 damage is the default amount of damage at the moment. But it's also a good amount of damage. Non-GX Boswell will get perfectly KO'd by this. You do 140, they've got 130. And a choice band with weakness, you're up to 200. There goes Boswell GX. And you've still got Confusion. And I don't think you want to rely on Confusion. But as I've said many, many times before, if you cannot get a one-hit KO... Get a two-hit KO with Disruption. And that's what you're doing here. You're saying, look, I'm not getting a one-hit KO. I'm rocking a two-hit KO. But between those KOs, you're going to be confused. So either you get out of the active, and Guzma is everywhere, admittedly, or you flip a coin. And if heads, you get to attack like normal. But if tails, you take three damage counters, and the attack fails. And then I'm going to KO you. Because at that point, you're talking 230. That's kind of everything from Gardevoir on down. So, yeah, you're going to be two-hit KO with this really quite nicely. And in terms of the energy here, we got double colorless energy. We've got Malamar. It's not that difficult to get the energy rolling. I don't think you play this for the attack. But then again, we didn't play the Lost Thunder Giratina for the attack. But it's still got quite a nice attack. Although, incidentally, unless you're really relying on double colorless energy, the other Giratina does usually have a better attack. I say that. The other Giratina can take out non-GXs and GXs if they're weak. 
This one basically two hit KOs everything with confusion in the middle. But the other one has to put four damage counters on a Pokemon when you attack. So there is an argument that if you're not one hit KOing, this is a better attack. I'll leave that one up to you, ladies and gentlemen. Either way, I'm giving this between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. It is a really, really nice card that has a really nice ability, though not as good as some others, and a decent two-hit KO attack, though admittedly not stunning. So I think between three and four no half Wossies barbaric is a fair score. But I would very much like to know what you think. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. Be nice, would ya? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where we talk about really fun games like Keyforge, Transformers, and whatever else takes my fancy. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.